I would like to welcome uh, to many of you may know. We have over 35 years of experience in the IT industry, nationally and internationally. His name is Austin. Welcome to the stage. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I will share with you today how in my life technology has made a big impact on my 16 startups uh, and how uh, AI is driving new technologies at a pace we've never seen before. Since my first company that I started in uh, 1983 while a student at Norwegian School of Management, the first meeting I had with disruptive technology by introducing the personal computer to the Norwegian marketplace we ended up being the fastest growing business in Norway in any industry in the 80s. I have, besides looking at this, listening to this sound, I will know immediately the pub, the, if the sound was there. It wasn't. Even if we test it in the, before <laughs> we start. That's the modern side. Besides starting companies, I have uh, uh, five children at the age of uh, between 8 and 19 years old. And my oldest son, Christian, he's about to start his career. And he will, of course, never set his feet in a bench, uh, bank branch, nor will he never call customer service. He expects an immediate answer from a chatbot or in a short future from an AI-driven voice-related chatbot that will immediately answer his needs on a personal level across all platforms involving any transactional financial transaction. Uh, my youngest son, Alexander, he is the first one to actually be born with a supercomputer between his hands. He could operate the iPad even before he could walk. He is <laughs> operating today seemingly this YouTube, uh, Google, Netflix. He is fully uh, self-dependent and he speaks fluent English and my worry is that he's <coughs> he's living or been raised in AI moderated reality I thank God or maybe I should in this context say that the politicians of Norway that we have the Norwegian school system which are focusing on empathy cooperation uh, physical activities and that we have and I won't believe myself saying it, NRK as a state government uh, <laughs> TV channel. But truth to be told, his main conception of new knowledge and entertainment is really delivered to him based on algorithms written by anonymous coders in companies so far in the US, in offices we don't know, we don't know who they are, what they do and how they do it. They tell us they do it for improving services, but I suspect they do it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> and that worries me, not only as a father, but when the most resourceful uh, institution in the world, CIA, yet not have found out how presumably the Russians manipulated the American people to elect Trump as president. I think we all have reasons to worry. So, AI is sneaking into our lives from all areas. We have black boxes. We don't know where they are. There are no accounting. There are no one held accountable. No governmental institutions. No audits by international organizations. And it's happening everywhere. And we have no insight. There is no transparency. And I believe seriously that's a real reason for all of us to worry for the future ahead. What's happening? This little family of seven, we are five different uh, uh, generations. We have different value sets. We have different judgments. We have different approach to technology. These people, we all meet in our job relations today. You will meet them as your co-workers. They will run your startup. They will be all different, different people that we all should adjust to. They will be your next demanding customers, your next demanding client your next demanding user. They are all different. I know, I know them all. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened in my 35 years as a startup uh, entrepreneur, I've noticed that the pace of new technology to be introduced has increased. 
And the fascination is that the speed of new disruptive technology is faster than ever. And when we look at the next two, three years with the introduction of 5G network and the Internet of Things, the data amassed is unbelievable. We will have like 50 billion devices, 1 trillion sensors. We all start wearing them and we are willingly greedy giving it away for better services. And it accelerates. And as we know, as many say, data is the new oil. The good news is that oil is heavy in the infrastructure investments and very costly and the wealth amassed is for the very few. The world is full of unstructured data, which is the fuel for a good AI and it's up to us all to utilize it for the betterment of humanity and to actually make the wealth available for more than the very few. So what's, what's happening? F just a little bit more than five years ago, only one of those companies were among the five biggest in the world, and that was Microsoft. The rest were in energy and finance. And look who's coming, as a few others have mentioned, the Chinese. They live on this simple uh, idea that if it can be automated, digitized and self-served, then we will make a service that does this. If not we, some of one, our 100,000 partners or startups will do it. So the first thing I tell any small business, or for that case, any big business, take a close look at what you're doing. Can it be digitized? Can it be automated? Can it be self-served? Well, do something about it. If you don't do it, you can be sure that somebody else will. And soon. Uh, I'm amazed when I look back in my life, on my life, how many things that has been digitized and where the hardware has shrinked in size and all that has been put into this small little friend of ours, the supercomputer we wear. I counted 40, I did the math, I counted 40 physical objects that has been actually replaced by my supercomputer. And the fascinating thing is, if I tell you that the this exponential growth in computing capacity and the decreasing size of hardware. This trend is continuing at a fascinating speed. So in the near future, we will see that the cost of health care, education, even transport, law services will go against zero. Even energy. And when I say that, my wife is angry because she's at the board of one of the biggest energy companies in Norway. But that's the trend. And when you, if you shrug at that, I say, look back a few years and see what happened. Entertainment has become free with YouTube videos. We have music for free with Spotify. We can download thousands of free apps to solve almost any problem. Even advanced open AI uh, software is available for free. Storage is free. Computing power is almost for free. And that happened just a few years back. So look what's ha happening to, to come. And if the platform owners and SpaceX delivers on their promise to deliver internet access to the rest of the world, and not our modem sound that you didn't hear, but 5G network, high-speed internet, we will have 3 billion more people online in a few years. Think of all the talents that we will discover. Think of all the new customers we will meet. And think of all the competition we meet as well. Because a 10-year-old female girl with a super computer in her hands in the slums of Africa, she will have access to information and software and computing power more than the Harvard professor had just 5, 10 years ago. And my hope, and I believe, even the price of the smart computer is going down. I bought this on um, Wish a few weeks ago. It cost less than 20 euros. And it's a very good, I didn't believe my eyes when I saw it. And then I was thinking how many producers are there really of smartphones in the world. So the cost of this supercomputer is also going down. So AI is driving technologies at a speed we have never seen before in humankind's history. All technologies, sensors, smart homes, Smart cities, 3D printing is turning upside down the value chain. 
Maybe we are in the future very close where we don't look at the price of objects. We look at the cost per kilo to print at our home or in our offices, whatever we need. And those of us who are still willing to flash a brand, maybe we are willing to pay an extra $10 to get Nike on our new shoes printed. <laughs> uh, we have robots, we have nanotech, we have biotech. And the fascinating thing is that all technologies that are transformed into information technologies, they seem to have the same exponential growth. So I heard one said he was 150 as a goal. I'm always saying I'm, I'm considering retiring around 120. 120. <laughs> so I think a few of the statistics we have been shown is maybe not correct. So DNA is, uh, CRISPR is very exciting. And of course drones, blockchain technology. And for those who doesn't believe in exponential growth or believe that uh, we have physical barriers, we, they invented uh, quantum computing. So the guys who <laughs> claim to know what they're talking about, they say they don't see any foreseeable limitations to Moore's law in the next 10 years. And just imagine if we can double the capacity the next two years of all that has happened in humankind's history before us, the next two years. And two years from now, we double again. That's quite amazing, I think, and scary. So when you talk about AI, it's, of course, the reason I've been talking about AI for 30 years. It's been around, but not much has happened. It's over-promised and under-delivered. But a lot has happened the last two years. And if the speed follows the next coming two years, we're living in an exciting time. So what we see now is the big question. Can AI actually perform as good as humans? In certain areas, yes. Will we have artificial intelligence at par with human levels? Then I'm talking about AI replacing or being as good as us with all our sensory inputs. I don't know what you think. Do you, do you think it will happen? It gradually happens, but will we have artificial general intelligence? <coughs> some say yes, some say no. So says it's never possible. Will we have conscious intelligence, machine? Can we have machines that are conscious? That's an interesting philosophical question. And I, from my perspective, I think that we are a result of 250,000 generations div division from the common mother we have with the monkeys. That's only 250 calculations, small minor changes in our brains. Is consciousness a result of the goal that evolution has set out? Reproduction, survival of the fittest? Or is it just a blind spot accidentally happening in humans? So that it doesn't appear to be like the other animals on the planet have consciousness? What do you think? Is it only the humans who are conscious? I don't know. But when I look at my two dogs and I look them in the eye, I believe they're quite conscious. I just believe that when we walk the park, they have a kind of consciousness which is quite different from me. They live their life through their smelling. They have senses which are quite fantastic that I can never even imagine how they exist. The same, I think, goes for a whale that can live in the ocean. It has a kind of consciousness that I will never relate to or understand, but I believe it's conscious. So if that applies to all living creatures on the planet Earth, is it rooted in our biological system in a way which is not possible to replicate in AI, in machines? Or is it just neural signals that we can copy, study, and replicate? Truth is, we haven't even agreed on the definitions of intelligence, human intelligence. And we don't understand what consciousness is. So we should pay more attention to it to understand it. And I say, I hope it's not possible to develop conscious machines. But I'm not willing to take the risk. <coughs> so let's focus on creating intelligent machines to be better than us in all possible areas.
but we don't have to give them goals same as evolution has given by accident us fittest survival of the fittest or reproduction i think that's up to us or what do you think and now i'm excited to check the technical because this is not working <laughs> it did work earlier I would recommend you, for those of you who didn't look at the latest uh, uh, developer conference of Google, they demonstrated AI booking uh, hairdresser saloon. <laughs> yeah, it's here. Sure, I'd just like to play it for you. This is AI. At 12 p.m. Do you not have a 12 p.m. available? The closest we have to that is a 115. Do you have a at 10 a.m. and 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what services she looking for. Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have the 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's your first name? It's pretty immersive. And this Google Assistant is now available in Norwegian. I haven't tested this one. Mm -hmm. But again, this is what AI can do in a narrow, specific area. This, in this case, call and make an appointment for a hairdresser saloon. I'm not sure if I ask the same AI, can you book me a table for dinner tonight? Or can you do this and that? I, probably it wouldn't be able to do it. But this gives us a glimpse of what's coming. So for sure, AI will be better at, at, at uh, face recognition, speech recognition, language processing, most of our senses. And it will be more and more gradually intertwined and I think we are moving towards general kind of intelligence, but hopefully not conscious. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a lot of the speakers have been talking about uh, what's happening in the world, and we all know that it's coming to China. It's coming from China. Most of the investments are happening in China. US, United States are losing its hego hego bo 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 <laughs> You get it. And uh, most interesting, as uh, one of the other speakers also pointed out, most of the patents filed are from China. So the last question I will ask is, what kind of society do we want? Uh, I heard a Chinese speaker uh, almost proudly say that we don't have to care about GDPR in China. So imagine the people and the data they can collect and how they actually use it by social scoring. If you haven't looked into that, the society of China spit on the payment, sneak, buy the wrong products, do the wrong comments on social media, and you are rated social. That gives you less opportunities for work. It gives you less opportunities for choosing schools for uh, children, your children. That's a kind of society I really not dream of for <coughs> Norway. We, as a small nation, as one of the speakers said, we can take a stand. We will never win the data <laughs> battle but we can actually use our position as a trustworthy country with specialities in different areas and raise our voice to create a society and to imp have impact on policies. Unfortunately, we are moving towards a political situation now with Trump and others who are more nationalistic and are going away from international treaties. We as a nation, small nation, we depend on international treaties. We should take a position on AI ethics, all of us. And finally, I would like to thank uh, the organizer for organizing this event. I think this is very important. We all share a mutual common responsibility to bring AI up to the agenda. I have a very optimistic view on the future. I think AI and will drive new technologies and create enormous wealth if we can observe the political changes that need to be done in order to redistribute that wealth to a just world for all of us to live in. And as a final comment, <laughs> I would say it's a fantastic world to live in if you are thinking of running a startup. Cash money for investment is abundant. And we can see this on this graph that if you have a good solution for a million people or for a billion people, you can now easily start a billion dollar company, as this proves. I so think we need to break it off that now. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's again. <laughs> Thank you, people. I'd love to continue the discussion. Meet me at LinkedIn or 